Welcome to the Databricks Skill Builder Series. We're glad you're here. Hi, uh, I'm Peter Stern. I'm a specialist solutions architect at Databricks. I specialize in uh, optimization of performance. Um, <clears throat> and I use the Spark UI on a very regular basis to uh, diagnose cost and performance issues um, uh, in Spark. And uh, I noticed that there wasn't really a great document out there um, to help people uh, not only but there's lots of documents out there that define the spark ui but not very many documents that explain how to use the spark ui and so i put together a document that's now included in the databricks documentation um and by the way this this uh this document is definitely uh Databricks focused, um, but it can be useful even if you're not using Databricks, say you're using uh, Spark on some other platform. For the most part, the advice uh, is pretty similar. Uh, some of the solutions may be different, but uh, this guide is mainly intended to find uh, and diagnose issues. Um, so even if some of the solutions are different, uh, the diagnosis may be the same. Um, so let me share that document with you. And I'm gonna walk through how to use it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off my video and I don't think we need that. Um, <clears throat> so this is the document and um, it's, again, it's, it's published as part of the Databricks docs here. And um, uh, you can Google for it, but if you wanna find it through the documentation, it's under data engineering, optimization and performance, and diagnose cost and performance issues using the Spark UI, and that will bring you to this page. Um, so the guide is broken down into uh, steps, and so this is, this is definitely a, a how-to guide. Um, the first step is we're gonna use the jobs timeline in the Spark UI to identify major issues, then look at the longest stage, figure out what's going on there, uh, see if there's skew or spill in the longest stage, uh, determine whether that stage is IO bound. And then, so this is basically the, the, the uh, methodology here uh, generally is to identify the longest running piece of uh, whatever you're trying to diagnose, and then figure out, well, why is it so long? Uh, it's not trying to, you know, uh, show all the possible problems that you could have in a pipeline or a workload. It's focusing in very much on the slowest part and diagnosing it. So the first part is just how to open up the uh, Spark UI in Databricks. And then each page has this. Um, uh, these links in it that are navigational links and bring you to the, the next part of the guide. Uh, so let's take the first step, basically. So in the in the jobs timeline, and this is how the, the guide is laid out. It's it's again, it's not really assuming any knowledge. Uh, if you already know how all this works, then you can pretty much skip through it. But if you don't know, it's going to explain every step along the way. How do you even open up the jobs timeline? Um, and then once you have the jobs timeline open, it's going to tell you what you should be looking for, right? So, uh, for example, something that you should be looking for in the jobs timeline is failed jobs or failing executors. And it also shows what that looks like so that you can um, identify it in your Spark UI. And if you happen to see this, then there's a link. And this is the, the same method, method that's kind of followed throughout the guide. If you see something like this, there'll be a link that talks more about that or brings you to some solution or something along those lines. Um, <clears throat> let's say that we don't see this. Uh, then there's another thing that you might look for, gaps in execution, long jobs, small jobs, or even you don't see any of the above and it tells you what to do in that case. But let's say this is the most common case probably is you're gonna see a long job. Uh, and let's go and try to diagnose what happens in that case. Right, so we're narrowing it down 
and I'm uh, this guide is showing you what's important if this is your situation. So let's diagnose. Um, the first thing we're going to do is look at the I/O details of that, the longest stage in that job. Um, look at the number of tasks, and if you have one task, then it's going to say, "Hey, you might have you might have to look into that." But let's say you don't have that problem, so we're going to look at the skew and spill. Um, so it's going to help you. First of all, that's going to give you. Uh, it's not assuming you know what spill is, uh, but uh, this guide doesn't exist uh, in uh, isolation. There is uh, a link to. If you don't know what spill is, you can find out what spill is by going to this link. Uh, this shows you how to identify whether there's spill. Uh, if you do see spill, you want to go to this guide. Uh, same with skew. You go to this guide. Uh, let's say we don't see any of that, <clears throat> and we're going to identify whether there's a lot of I.O., and now we're at the sort of stage, let's say that we've uh, identified that input is the slow part, uh, as kind of you can see is the case here, input is where the time is being spent. Um, now we're sort of at, hey, we've diagnosed uh, a problem. And it's going to give you, uh, in this case, it's giving you a bunch of possible solutions. Uh, again, this is this guide is mostly about getting you to an issue, and then maybe quickly giving you some idea what solutions might be, and then linking you to um, more explanations and different guides and different uh, documentation, uh, rather than sort of rebuilding everything here. Uh, it's it's mostly relying on links at this point. Uh, so if you are using Databricks, then uh, you know these are these are obviously uh, Databricks specific approaches. But even if you're not using Databricks at this point, you've come to a diagnosis of a okay high input, and then whatever platform you may be on, and some of these might be um, relevant. Uh, in this particular case, a lot. Well, DFP is uh, available outside of Databricks, but a lot of this, this is generic. This can be on any platform, um, potentially. Um, but uh, yeah, so at this point, we are linking out. And so this is a different guide maintained by somebody else, um, but uh, has lots of information on this particular issue. Oh, sorry, I uh, I clicked on the link, but you couldn't see it because I'm sharing just this tab. Let me share my window instead. OK. So for example, one bit of advice links to this other guide here. It has a lot of information on solving that particular issue. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, you know, start at the top and work your way down. And uh, you may do this multiple times, actually. Uh, you identify the longest piece. You uh, diagnose and fix it. And then, of course, you're probably going to be left with some other longest piece. So uh, you go and now uh, start from the top and work your way down to figure out, well, why is that one slow? Um, and uh, you just keep uh, keep at it and keep speeding things up one piece at a time. So that's, uh, that's what I'm, uh, this will help you master the Spark UI and hopefully improve your cost and performance of your, your Spark workloads. Thank you.